But one of the other standards of science that's been badly broken is the fear that's been created within the scientific community to express concerns about GMOs. Scientists who do have concerns have been made afraid to express them. And those that have expressed them, who have done research that have shown problems, or who have in any way stood up and gone against this push to promote them, they often, if they don't have tenure, they've been denied tenure. If they have tenure, their offices and privileges have been taken away. If, if they're trying to get a job in, in uh, the private sector, they don't get it. It's been, there's a major chilling effect that has been, that permeated the scientific community. That again goes against science. Science, the lifeblood of science is open, honest communication of the facts and disagreement and honest argument. That's how scientific knowledge gets refined. It's not happening in the case of genetically engineered foods. People are really afraid to speak out. And there's a telling quote from Philip Regal, a professor emeritus of biology at the University of Minnesota. He stated, and he uh, he's been involved in the movement to try to get the facts of genetic engineering out there much more, and he's been very bold, and he's come under a lot of attack. He stated, traditionally, scientists regarded intellectual honesty as part of collegiality, and there was accountability if one was caught telling lies. Accordingly, liars were blackballed. But since the rise of genetic engineering, the situation of molecular biology has to a significant degree become inverted. And when it comes to that technology, one gets blackballed for telling the truth. And he could have added and gets rewarded for twisting the truth because many people who twist it keep rising through the ranks. We're not gonna eat. That would have been in the next part. Um, so I think, I think, um, I think it should be clear that, as I said, there's been a major fraud. Science has been badly attacked, badly attacked, and the differences between the attacks on science in regard to climate science and in regard to genetically engineered foods are very distinct, as I said. An, an external attack by forces hostile to science in the case of climate science, and an inside job, attack from science from within in the case of GMOs. And if we compare, uh, if we compare the situation of climate science and, and climate change and GMOs, we see, again, great contrasts, even though the proponents, as I mentioned earlier, want to equate uh, any opposition to GMOs as similar to the attacks on climate uh, science and the denial of global warming. But here's another very key distinction. In the case of climate science, um, the evidence, there has been no, hardly ev any, if any, evidence published in the scientific literature that goes against, that contradicts the consensus opinion that global warming, unusual global warming is happening and that human activity is playing a significant role. As you've seen, in the case of GMOs, there's substantial amount of, ev of uh, research evidence published in the scientific literature that goes against the standard claims that GMOs are no riskier than their conventional counterparts. Also, in the case of, of uh, climate science, the, the main attack on climate science is coming, as I said, from external forces outside the scientific community, from major corporations and their allies in the political field and in the media and in some think tanks. In the case of genetic, and the scientific community has been staunchly resisting, standing against that, that attack, but far more uh, ominous in the case of genetically engineered foods, the key elements of the scientific community have been on the side of the major corporations and the, their allies, and they are making statements, misrepresentations, that are the same kinds of misrepresentations that the major corporations are making. They're defending the products of those corporations 
through subverting through the subversion of science. So it's a much more dangerous situation. And a, another major difference, as I'm sure you're all aware, in the case of the attack on climate science, any of the of the few scientists in the minority who are often allied with the uh, with the major corporations, they get tremendous publicity. You can have consensus opinion and then a few uh, scientists who say, no, we don't agree with that, and the media gives them a lot of attention. Or when fraud is uh, alleged on the part of the climate scientists, that gets tremendous coverage. In the case of genetically engineered foods, where too many of the scientists who are promoting them actually have been committing fraud. Hardly anybody is aware of that fraud. That's why I wrote the, one of the main reasons I wrote the book. So now you do understand that there has been a fraud, that genetically engineered, that there has never been a scientific consensus that GMOs uh, are safe, and that there is good reason to make sure you avoid them and that those you love avoid them because the risks have been well documented, and uh, if you say no to GMOs, you are not going against science, you are actually aligning yourself with the facts and with our best scientific knowledge.